course, he's drinking his water. The top of every Tell what show. Is. Tell them who we are. Ron and Hope Unfiltered. Are you drinking unfiltered <coughs> water? What are you drinking? <coughs> no, I just... I've been talking a lot today. Have you? <coughs> yep. <coughs> mm -hmm. We want to start off the show by defining what is a meanie. Me. What is a mean? No, define. Me. Tell them in our world what meanie means. You said I was today. No, I didn't. I ask you, were you? <clears throat> I never tell you you are. I ask you and let you say it, because I've learned better than to call you that. So I just say, are you? Is this a meanie day? <laughs> and my response <clears throat> always is, I'm. I don't know. We'll see. So I ask you that in the mornings. Yeah. I usually can tell when there's signs of meanie. And usually the signs of meanie come when you have provoked me. Like what? How's that? After you want to talk about this morning? After I've run your bath and you got your No, coffee? no, you didn't do that this morning. You want after to talk I've about run, this morning? What? Okay, listeners, Pastor Ron had to get some blood work this morning, and it had to be scheduled about a week ago mm -hmm. because those slots fill up, mm -hmm. right? And did he schedule his own blood work? No, no, we can't do that. I have to schedule it. Because my wife's got all my money. Mm. Because money had nothing to do with scheduling I don't, I don't your have blood any work. Money to pay for a doctor without hope. Ron, so has all Ron, money. don't, don't, just okay. don't. So I schedule the blood work, and I tell him last night, "Your blood works tomorrow, like a child." Okay, now lay your clothes out. Have you ever made your, a mistake? Your blood, your blood works tomorrow. Have you ever made a Can mistake? Can I finish the story? Okay, and remember, and I even text him. Why are you, you looking around at everybody in the room? You <laughs> do not eat. After midnight, you can't right. eat after midnight because it's a now, full I panel. I know that, and I do that regularly. But last night, I had a lapse. <laughs> so this morning, one o'clock in the morning. Wait, I his forgot. clock goes off this morning. I just forgot, and he says, uh, "What's that blood work place?" No, I said, "What road? What road is it on?" I, I'm like, "What?" He said, "I might have to call and reschedule." Why, Ron? Because I forgot, and I ate something. I said, what'd you eat, Ron? He said, a Reese cup. <laughs> what time, time, Ron, did you— There's context for this. What time did you eat the Reese cup, Ron? The last time I was 1 there— 1 a.m. The last time I was there, they told me, they said, your blood sugar level is a little elevated. Mm. And and I remember why. I had poured some— that vanilla stuff in my coffee right before I went, and I didn't mean to. It's just by habit. Ron, you didn't want to go get your blood work done this morning yeah, I did. anyway. I really did. You did. You I ate really that did. Reese cup on purpose. I've been looking forward so, to getting my blood taken. <laughs> we would have to <laughs> reschedule. I was waiting. And did he get up and call? He did. And, he, and then Look, he came back and he, number. <laughs> they wanted and, a number. And I ain't he got came the back, he said, I, I don't have the confirmation number. I will have to do this later. Anyway, well, Ron. Can't you just be understanding. No, because that's ridiculous. Mm -mm. You're 54. And you got up, and I could see the meanie eyes, and I'm like, is this going to be another one of them days? Is this going to be a meanie day? You started me off on the wrong well, I needed foot. Help. I needed help. I couldn't do your coffee and all this morning. I needed you this morning and use a meanie this morning. Ooh, we. I, I cooked I, your breakfast and did your coffee and did your blood work thing. You, you so. did cook the grandkids' breakfast and I got a leftover <laughs> piece of sausage. That was good. Anyway. And you know what else? Something's going on with my knuckles too, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got have, some inflammation going that. on. You know why I have to say that? Because everybody want to know why I ain't wearing no ring. <laughs> Because I'm a meanie. <laughs> Everybody, they won't hear a thing we're saying. They won't know about my shoes, and they won't know why I ain't wearing my wedding dress. kind of stuff. It's because you, you said you got something going on with your knuckle. I don't know what it is. It's swole. <laughs> anyway, I think you need some blood work done because you got some issues going on. Some forgetting issues. Look, blood work don't show and a some, swole knuckle. And some inflammation. You can't tell. Yeah, I can tell in his blood he's got swole knuckles. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Look, and the thing is, what's crazy, we're talking about something so but serious see, today. But you're, see, you're telling people I'm a meanie. No, no, I said, are you? And all I have to put up with. What? With you. Just and managing you pastor, and your life. Pastoral foolishness. <sighs> hmm. Anyway. 
What are we talking about today, Ron? You know how boring things would be if you just didn't have me like that, though. Speak Keeping up. It interesting all the time. We're talking about tongues. <laughs> Speaking in tongues. I need to speak in it right now. I need to get in the spirit. Speaking in tongues will get you out of meaning and it'll get you into it'll get you into the spirit. That's one of the first things that it does. Well, okay, let's reset. Let's take a breath and let's get into this topic. Okay, okay. Ron. Because it is a very controversial topic, even in the church. I know why it's controversial. I know, but that it right is that ticks me off. I know, that but me, it is. It makes me mad again. A lot of people do not believe that it is it's for real. Tell them our experience in Minnesota, what what you and I did. We went and did this this whole weekend at a church together. I mean, we did marriage, we did pastors round table, we did business. But we did business, we did men's, Women's. we did we just did a whole weekend for them. But we ended out that night. They said they wanted a revival night, Sunday night, you know, and and you said some interesting things that the weirdness had been removed from. Explain that, what you're talking about. Well, I think growing up like we did, we grew up in the hyper-holiness church, which I'm very grateful for. I love my upbringing. I say the same thing. And, I mean, I, there was severe moves of God that I got to witness growing up that forever changed my life, that impacted me, and I'm grateful for it. But a lot of weird things did go on. In churches, and you saw— And we were told it was the same Holy Ghost. Yes. And so, we, you know, that would kind of scare you as a kid, like, well, if I say I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, make, am I going to roll around? Yep. Am I going to roll around on the floor? Am I going to bark like a dog? Am mm. I going to run on the back of the pew? Now, we have some viewers right now that have no clue what you're talking about when you say stuff like that. Guys, but we, we might have some barkers. <laughs> you know, we we might— we, you got to understand, me and Hope came as children up through— really intense Pentecostal churches in the 70s. And then, of course, in the 80s, I was in high, middle and high school and graduated. But up through the 70s as a kid, and we see God do powerful things. I mean, tumors shrink, gorders yeah. fall off, you know, legs Drunk grow. Drunk people walk in the you back walk, door and get to the altar and, and they're, they're sober. sober. They're yeah, sober. Yeah, just I crazy mean, stuff. Th this stuff. This stuff that I want so bad for this generation to see, and, and it— it hurts me that a lot of them have never experienced it because their leaders have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. And here, here's the problem. Now I'm going to own this too. We saw the power of God, and we saw some ridiculous stuff. And the stuff that was powerful was attributed to the Holy Ghost, and the stuff that was ridiculous was attributed yeah. to the Holy Ghost. And what I've learned as I've grown older now and, and, and you know, my 50s, I've learned that the Holy Ghost didn't do those ridiculous things. That was people's response to God. That's right. People are going to have all kinds of responses to God. People have all kinds of responses to a roller coaster. Right. People have all kinds of responses to a movie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm not in charge of the way everybody in the room responds to a, a, a Friday the 13th movie. There's going to be a hundred different responses yeah. in that. Some room. people scream on a roller coaster. <laughs> exactly some people right. just keep their eyes closed. And the it's same different. is true in the presence of God. There's some people that jerk. There's people that wiggle. There's people that laugh. There's people that every time they see God move, they weep. Right. There's there's all kind of responses, but we saw hyper church responses attributed to the same Holy Ghost that healed cancer. Right. Okay. Now, the problem is. I like the God that heals cancer, but is, you know, is that God going to make me, you know, roll, roll the from floor. left to the right, you know, for two hours while people are trying to cover me up and make sure I don't show nothing I don't need to show? I mean, yeah. that that's the stuff that we saw, too. So people do <laughs> just say, uh, I'd rather not deal with that. That's my conjecture. I just, I just want to go to heaven. I don't have analytics. Yep. I have a, you know, I don't have empirical data. But as a guy who does church and has done church for a long time, I see now a generation that saw that stuff. And they said, you know what? I don't want that. That's not what I want. That right there is ridiculous, and that's going to run people off. Yeah. And I don't want it. The problem is, when you threw out that— you threw out all the you benefits. You threw out— the healing of the cancer, yeah. you threw out the, the well, sobering, the, the drunk. Yeah, you, you threw out the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, here is a personal pet peeve that tears me up. I don't put it on social media. But this is the first time I'll let it out. But you know, because I have to, I vent to you. 
I could flip through Instagram right now, Hope, and let's take 10 well-known current leaders. I bet you five to seven of them would have something in their message or their message would be about purpose or destiny Mm -hmm. or your dream or the vision Mm -hmm. for your life. Yeah. if God wants you to five have that. Out of seven you need to find what this. would be for that. Yeah. What you have in you and how you supposed to live out your purpose and live out your destiny. The only person that knows my destiny is the Holy Spirit. You say, where's that? First Corinthians 2. For who knows God except the Spirit of God? Mm-hmm. And who knows man? And who knows a man except the Spirit? Except the Spirit of a man mm-hmm. who is in him. 1 John 2, 20, you have an anointing. And you know all things. And you know all things in your anointing. The anointing means the the Holy Spirit is taking up residence in you. So if you're anointed, the Holy Spirit is taking up residence on the inside of you and made you his home. So we got too much on the stage that isn't anointed Mm. because they don't even believe in the Holy Spirit taking up residence. Right. They believe you get a little something spiritual when you got saved, But Jesus proclaimed himself as a door. We're taking everybody to the door, but we're not opening the door. Jesus came to take away the sin so that the dove could come. The dove will not light on anything unclean, and the Holy Spirit is the dove of heaven. He takes the sin out so that the Holy Spirit can come, and the works that Jesus did, we do because the Holy Spirit now works through our body just like he did the physical body of Jesus. Jesus said it was expedient that he goes. Yeah. He said, it'd be better for you. He's got guys that's been eating meals with him, hearing everything he said, sitting by the campsite, the fireside. And and they're saying, if I go, it's going to get better. better Yeah, Because I'm with you, but he who is coming shall be in you. And so, in other words, Jesus said, this person who lives in me, he's going to come and he's going to live on the inside of you. And you will do what I do because I go to the Father. That was the original intent of God, not just with Jesus, the second Adam, but all the way back to the first Adam. So before I get going, you better talk about I our sponsors. I know it. I know it. We love our sponsors. And this one today is Chime. Do your financial goals feel out of reach? Have you ever been there? Yes, we've been there a hundred times, but they don't have to be. With Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, you can start building credit with your own money through on-time payments and small everyday purchases like groceries, streaming, and gas. Members see an increase of 30 points to their credit scores on average. Chime reports your payments to the major credit bureaus to help you build credit over time, all with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. Start making your financial dreams a reality with Chime. Signing up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash Ron and Hope. That's Chime.com slash Ron and Hope. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank in a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card based on a study conducted by Experian. Credit Builder members observed an average of 30 point FICA score, eight increase after eight months with regular on-time payments. Results may vary. See Chime.com for details. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply, except at MoneyPass ATMs in 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance (gasps) ATM. You know what, guys? Check out our sponsors because, number one, we believe in them. Number two, they're good to us. And uh, number three, we believe that what they do can help you. Yes. So, great, and building great, your great credit. Time. Listen, if it builds, helps build your I credit. I stay on my kids. Yep. I stay on my kids. We got our last one just left and is now establishing his independence. And I had this very talk with him uh, two weeks ago. Yep. So If you don't anyway, buy anything else, <laughs> exactly pay your right. bills. You got to do that. So I was talking about my, my, my pet peeve. And I was explaining scripturally, I then laid out about four or five scriptures that basically for Colossians 3, 1 through 3 says, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ. Christ means the anointing, the Holy Spirit in God. My whole life, who I am, what I can do, the destiny that God has for me to be, 
When I embrace the Holy Spirit, he comes from eternity, sweetheart, and he comes into time. He's already toured the mind of God. Who knows God except the Spirit of God? He comes out of eternity into time, and Jesus said he will be your guide. Right. So the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of me because he's already toured the mind of God about my life. God says, I've been foreknown, predestined, called, justified, glorified. God sees our life in past tense. This is important. I'm not preaching a sermon, but I want you to see this. So God has hidden my life, and I told him Sunday, God hides stuff. Mm-hmm. The secret he place. He who dwells in the secret yeah. place of the Most High God. He hides stuff. What you pray in secret, he will reward openly. These are mm-hmm. scriptures. Uh, the Bible says that the kingdom is a mystery. The Bible says that marriage is a mystery. Just keep going. The Bible says <laughs> that our relationship between church and the Christ is a mystery. Yeah. Uh, the Bible, uh, I'm just trying to, there's one or two others I'm about where it's secrets, it's hidden, it's mysteries, and it's a theme. Yeah. So God has taken your life and hidden it within your anointing. He's not hidden it from you. He's hidden it for you. Right. And so if there is this secret life on the inside of me, we know that— That only the Holy Spirit knows. We know that nothing happens until something is spoken. You couldn't even get saved until you confessed. Right. Your initial experience with God is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and thou shalt be saved. And if you don't do those two things, those are the initial experience that you will ever have with God. Believe and confess. you got to say Okay, so for my life to happen, it has to be spoken. Problem is, in my anointing, I know all things in my spirit, but my head don't know. Right. So a life coach, praise God for them, but they don't know my purpose. Yeah, no, they can help structure your life. Thank God for every one of these pastors we have that are doing a great job, but they don't know my purpose. Right. They can give me tools. Right, and structure. They can they can give me tools. They can give me structure. They can help me with disciplines mm-hmm. in my life that foster this. But nobody knows my life. what I'm supposed to be and the purpose for which I'm here but the Holy Spirit. Right. But we have a generation that's told the Holy Spirit, you stay in the parking lot. We got this. And I've had them, some of them look me right in the face. You know, he's not coming here. Very disturbing because— those same preachers are talking about purpose and destiny. You are building people up for disappointment. They That will never be discovered outside of the person of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. who we were created to walk intimately with. So <laughs> let me ask, let me stop you there. Some people would say, though, is there a difference of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit taking residence in you at salvation. Big difference. And being filled with the Holy Spirit. There's the, the obviously. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Obviously, so, two subsequent events. Yes. Those are two subsequent events. Uh, there's a difference between experience and immersion. And uh, the fact is there was a subsequent experience. The whole book of Acts is really about that experience where finally Jesus has taken care of sin. He has gone back to sit at the right hand of the Father and now wait on the gift. Mm-hmm. This is why I came. Yeah, wait on the gift. I didn't come to stay, I come to leave. But the Holy Spirit's coming to stay. Mm-hmm. So now, 1 Corinthians 2 is my go-to when I talk about the Holy Spirit. I, I, may, I may bring in a ton of scriptures, but that's my springboard. And it's a weird, weird passage of scripture. For we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. In a mystery. Not the world's wisdom, but, but God's mm-hmm. wisdom. Okay? And the Bible says that this wisdom no eye has seen, no ear has heard. So there's no coach, there's no teacher, there's no uh-uh. class, there's no preacher. Only the Holy Ghost knows. That. No eye has seen, no ears heard, no has it ever entered the heart of a man, the things that God has right. already prepared. So let me talk to the prophetic now who are always saying God is about to, God is about to, God is about to, God is about to. God's not about to do anything. It's finished. It's done. It's done. We will come you're, into you're it. You're about to yes. come into something he's already, already prepared. Already done. But you got to understand, God has already prepared good works for me, Ephesians 2, that I should walk in them. So no no, no eyes seen, no ears heard, no to ever in the heart of man, the things God has already prepared. Right. So God created the garden before he made Adam. 
The garden was there when Adam got there. He didn't create Adam and say, whoo, I need to put him somewhere and I need something for him to do. So everything was there waiting for him when he showed up. Your life is waiting for you when you got here. But it's hidden in the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, no eyes seen, no ears heard, but these things are revealed by the Spirit. Revealed means to uncover. It's already there. It's so, something that's already look, there. It's hidden. Yeah. Your life is hidden yeah. with Christ in God. So now the Holy Spirit uncovers Revelation it. doesn't mean fresh new information. No. Revelation is Revelation's revealing internal. what's already yes. there. Information that comes from the outside in. Revelation is when God uncovers something that's already in yeah. you. So your purpose and destiny is not an external thing. It's an inside job. Right. It's already in you. And, that and if right you there, don't pull on the Holy Spirit, you'll never make the right never decisions. Make it. I mean, you, may, you may have a good life. Yeah. You may have some things go well with you. You may put up a lot of money in the bank before you die. But, I'm, but, but will you have lived reason, out the purpose yeah, and plan of God in your life? The reason you were born, yeah. that's only the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And, so, and that's where ultimate fulfillment is. And you can be doing a rough thing every day, but you got the peace of knowing you're walking in your purpose and you're walking in the will of God. There's been some times in my life I would never want to repeat, yeah. but I can look at almost every one of them and say, I know I was right where yeah. God wanted me. And so there was a peace in yeah, knowing that. The will that. of God doesn't guarantee <clears throat> happiness. No, it guarantees peace. Right. It guarantees peace and fulfillment. So it says, we speak this wisdom, the wisdom of God hidden in a mystery for our glory. That's another weird statement. The Bible don't talk about our glory much. In fact, this is just the opposite. Right. But that word glory there means advancement. So there's something hidden in me, and I've got to say it. And when I say it, it moves me forward. Mm -hmm. okay? It advances me. So where in the world, Hope, do I speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, I mean, and, and, and and I can see people when I'm reading that scripture. Even when I was in Minnesota, they were like, "What's the mystery?" First Corinthians fourteen, verse two. For when a man a man speaks in tongues, he speaks no in one mysteries. understands yeah. him, for he speaks unto God, and in the spirit he utters mysteries. mysteries. There's another scripture, Jude. <laughs> Building yourself up in, in the, the most, most holy, holy faith, faith praying, praying in the, in holy, the Ghost. holy Ghost. It was never about tongues. Can I believe? Can I tell you something? Yeah. I believe the enemy was in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's seeking the gift. The Everybody's tongues. freaked out. Thinking that if I just speak tongues? in tongues, I got yeah. something now. And if I let tongues come in my church, it's going to tear my church yeah. all to people, and people all get to, crazy when they're doing tongues. What I say? Tear my church all it's to. Tear my church all to pieces is what I meant to say. There's the word of the podcast. Tear my church all to pieces. You know, I, I don't. People's gonna be weirded out. I'm never gonna get professional yeah. people and culture people, and you know, to educate. Everybody's people focused to come. on the tongues and, and not it, what the tongues exactly, produce. It was never about the Holy Spirit did not invade the earth so we could speak in tongues. Right. Speaking in tongues is a God who we can't see who has put a life in us we can't see, housed in the Holy Spirit whom we can't see, and can only get out of us through a language we don't know. Right. It is a mystery. That's why it's the most holy faith. That's why it's the faith building yourself Faith is what you can't see, In the most holy hear, faith. Feel, the most touch. holy faith you can have is praying in the Holy Ghost because you're speaking mysteries and you don't even know what you're saying, right. but you're prophetically declaring your tomorrow. And that's something. If, the, if this is the case, and it is, we should be praying in the Spirit 24-7 I've thrown so out that our hope. life will advance. I, I mean, I, I'm, not, if your I'm life not a scholar. Is, if your life is not advancing, it could be because you're not praying in the Spirit. I'm not, a, I'm not a scholar. The only people that I know that have any arguments against this is 1 Corinthians 13 where it says, you know, these things will cease. These things will cease. Uh, but the Bible also says, forbid not the speaking of tongues in the assembly. Mm -hmm. So he was not talking about the cessation of spiritual gifts. Why is the Holy Spirit here if he doesn't bring fruit and he doesn't bring gifts? Right. He comes and he develops fruit and he gives gifts I just to think men. it's been a lack of teaching <laughs> and a lack of explanation. And that people, goes to my next Yeah, and peeve. so people cannot 
give what they don't have. There's very little expository preaching anymore. It's topical. Yeah. Because we got to have a brand. We got to have a cool concept. We got to have a cool graphic. We got to have a hat and a t-shirt. We got to have a cool name. We got to have a hat and a t-shirt. Come on. And we got and we got to make sure that we brand it in a way that is culturally relevant. And I haven't seen anybody in a long time take the Bible right and, and break it, it down. Just go verse, just teach it. That's you. And that's and your that's job, all, sir. And I tell people, if you don't like that, if people stop liking that, then my day will be over because that's all I know how to do. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were like, "Well, I love this preacher because he's so culturally relevant." And I stopped her. I said, "Relevant to what culture?" I said, "What culture is he trying to be relevant to? The world or to the kingdom?" I'm relevant to kingdom culture. And then people so see my, they're supposed to so see my light shine before men and it spur them on to good works, right. is what the Bible says. Um, I, I could care less about this culture. I'm trying to change this right. culture. Right. She I'm, was talking about, well, he dresses <laughs> this way and they show, you know, he's got a fancy Instagram and I love listening to him <laughs> preaching and he's relevant to the culture. And I'm like, no, we are called to change culture. Yeah, we are not, we are not embracing culture. We're supposed to be a counterculture. Right. We're not supposed to be an American subculture. Like you got this, 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 and church, and these are all American subcultures. We are a counterculture to everything. The kingdom is upside down when it's how the world lives. God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yeah. And so, uh, so I've, back I've, back to tongues. We got a few more minutes. I've said about all of it. I can say it, the whole thing is it was. So never, if somebody's listening to us and says, "Well, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't speak in tongues. <laughs> I, I would love this. I want my life to advance. I oh, want to pray these mysteries over my life, my family." I'm getting invited to more and more churches. Th- this is going to be my prophecy. I'm seeing something develop in Gen Z. Gen Z's not impressed with the light show. I think that stuff's kind of had its run. They're not impressed uh, with how fancy our productions are. And let me tell you something. Nobody has reinvented himself more times than me trying to be relevant to the the generation that I seek to serve, doing everything I can to be relevant. I try to wear some decent things too. But here's... Gen Z, I am seeing a group of people that want the power and the demonstration of God, which only comes in the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. And I'm seeing them get to the place they'll meet in a field or they'll meet in a barn if that power is resident in that place. Well, it's the only thing (laughs) that changes your life. Exactly. It really is. But we haven't had a generation that's tasted that. So what you haven't tasted, you don't know. Yeah. But we have Gen Z who, for whatever reason, they have tasted it. And as I'm seeing them emerge and becoming young adults, they don't care about what the previous generations have cared about. And they are all out passion for God, but they want the power and the move of God, which they know comes by the So Holy it's Spirit. a gift. It's a gift. <laughs> it is a gift. You just and asked for it. It was never about tongues. Let me say that again to classical denominations of which I came from one of them. There's a lot of you out there. It was never about tongue. Quit making it. It was about mysteries. Yeah. In but you, that is the evidence. <clears throat> right. The you tongues a, is the evidence. You are a house of mysteries. God has put your life within you. Nothing can happen till something is spoken. And God gave you a secret language to get the mysteries out and speak them and put them in the atmosphere so that faith can be activated for God to bring about the you that your mind is not acquainted with. So good. It's not acquainted with at all. So so ask <coughs> him, if that is you today and you're listening, you say, well, I want this power. And it is a gift. And all you got to do is ask for it, just like the gift <coughs> of salvation. It's that easy. And you just ask him for it. And you say, well, is he going to come on me? And am I going to shake? And is, it, is he going to make me speak in tongues? No, no absolutely That's not. That's another thing. The you Holy just, Spirit you'll don't hear speak it. in tongues. You'll hear it in your head. You will hear this language in your ears and in your head. And then you give voice to it and you speak it. And it's just like a language that your baby uh, started speaking. You babble at first and then you put words together and you put Phrases, sentences, sentences together. And it it grows and it develops the more you use it. And I would encourage you to pray in the Spirit every single day because that is allowing the Holy Spirit 
activation and work in your life so you can be led through this wonderful life that God I has called you to. to pray in the Spirit more than I do just put my faith too. on something. You know why? Because I don't trust myself. And the Bible says we see dimly. Yeah. We and, see we, dimly. and we can pray biased prayers <laughs> yes. a lot of times. We pray prayers that benefit me. Yeah. <laughs> we pray prayers that benefit me. But the Bible says he, Romans 8, he who prays in a tongue prays in perfect accordance with the will of God. Man, God has given you a prayer life with a 100% guarantee that you can't miss. Right. And guys, I don't care what you've been taught. Take off those glasses, look into the Word, and let's open our people up to this world of the Holy Spirit. We got more people on we got more people on Xanax. We got more people depressed. We got, but the suicide rate has skyrocketed. What? Because if they're killing themselves, then life here has no purpose to right. it. And whenever I am unsure about everything, I don't start calling people. I start praying in the Spirit of God. That's where my counsel comes from. He's wonderful counselor. That's what he is. So I just want to throw those things out. You know when I do something, I try to wrap it up in a ton of Scripture. Because if you don't, it's just your opinion or your idea of a thing. But um, I do think God has given me that side door approach to take the weirdness of something being odd well, to, out of to it. break the Word down and explain it. Right. Truly explain it. And not just say, be filled with the Holy Spirit, yep. like we were told growing up. But we didn't know why. Yep. And we thought it was just to speak in tongues. Yep. I thought that was why you got the Holy yeah. Spirit, so you could speak in tongues. And then and people could hear that you got the Holy Spirit because you speak in tongues. And then, but so then no what? one ever explained no one, then what, why yeah. you were doing it. Yep. And so then, good. And many times it was still a speaking in tongues event instead of a everyday relationship yeah, where right. you do that. I had one mentor way back in my life tell me, he said, start the first 10 minutes of every day. And I don't do this like I should, but I do employ it at many times, especially when I'm driving. Take the first 10 minutes of your day and pray in the Spirit before you even start. And they said, what you're doing is you're setting your day in order for your purpose to be accomplished so for that good. day. So good. So good. And so, guys, I'm telling you, this is a real life that the Holy Spirit wants to have with you. And it's not a weird life. Mm -hmm. It's a glorious yeah, life. Yeah, it is. And I would take nothing from my uh, Pentecostal heritage because it plays out in my life every day. Not here to try to start a debate. I'm here to try to inspire people to take that next level with God. There's more than being saved. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <coughs> until next time, it's Ron and Hope Unfiltered, Real Raw Relevant. We, we love, love you. you guys. Pray for my knuckle. We'll see you. <laughs>